Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to this next session on ABAP programming with SAP Cloud Platform. In our last session, we talked about the concepts of ABAP programming with SAP Cloud Platform. So what is ABAP on cloud? Its benefits? What is there for the programmers as part of ABAP on cloud? The overall journey for ABAP on cloud? The different perspectives available? The benefits of using ABAP on cloud followed by the demo of setting up our first ABAP on Cloud trial system. If you have not seen my last session, I would recommend you to please have a look at that session first before you continue for the current session. I will put the link of the previous session into the description of this video. You can go ahead and watch that tutorial. If you're willing to attend the complete ABAP on Cloud training, please subscribe the training on unaboutrainings.com where we will take you from ground zero to the highest peak of ABAP on cloud. So let's get started. In the last session, we have created our connection to the cloud system from our local ABAP development tools in Eclipse. In today's episode, we will go ahead and create our first database table and a very simple ABAP class. And on execution of that ABAP class, we will be creating some records to our table. So let's start creating a package first of all. So I'm going to right click, click on new about package. Let's give a name Z Anubar Trainings ED underscore about on cloud demo package. Just say www.anubartrainings.com and we'll say next. This is going to be a development package. And we will also lock this in a transport request. So let's create a new transport request for creating um, our development objects. So I will say this is my first ABAP on cloud package. And I'll say finish. And now what we're going to do is we will just go ahead and add some um, table to this package. So to create the database table, we do not have the SE11 at this point of time available with uh, ADT. Uh, this is one limitation as of now that you cannot use SAP GUI here to create anything. So you've got to still rely now on the CDS core data service data model. And CDS is an extension of your SQL in ABAP, which allows you to perform DDL, DQL, DCL, and expression language commands. So I'm going to right click and create a new ABAP object related to dictionary table. Let's search for dictionary table, database table, of course, and just say next. Let's give some names. So say why about trainings underscore sales order. So this is my sales orders table. Now I'll click on next button. And wow, there you go. We'll use the same transport request to also create this sales order table. And there you go. System creates a CDS-like definition over here for our sales order table. Now, probably I'll increase the font here a little bit to make you see this content, content properly. Just expand that and then just increase the above font. Let's edit that. Uh, maybe just want to go with 16 characters. Apply. And there you go. So now you can see it much better. So that's our about de definition of our about table, which you used to define in SC11. Now with the help of CDS syntax, we will be defining the same. So let's create a key field as sales order ID with about um, care 32 character. And then I will create a customer number name about car ED characters maybe. And I want to create a cross amount of the sales order and about dot. You can do a control space here. You can see I can also utilize my code completion feature nicely as part of ADD. Then we will enter currency code about dot currency code 
and let's also add a property created by that's gonna be your Sai Yu name and then I will also just say create it on timestamp data element awesome now you can see the gross amount field is showing me a design time error because uh, this is a type of currency and we need to always specify the reference field for currency as well as the quantity that's a core about concept you know the reference fields and reference uh, table concept right so that's something which we define here using something called CDS annotations so I will use here at the rate semantic amount currency code and then let's say hey currency code is represented by my currency code column this is reference table and it's a reference field awesome let's save this up and activate so this now creates a table in the underlying HANA DB because uh, the system uses behind the scene a HANA database now I can just click click on F8 to look at the content of the table and as you can see expected the table contains no records at this point of time you can also go to SQL console and right away type some SQL language over here but that's not what we want to do right now so now I want to create a very simple ABAP class and in that ABAP class when I execute I would like to insert two records or three records as part of my database table so it should be pretty easy so I'm gonna go back to my ADD and to back to the above perspective and now let's create here a new above class the system is speed is very very good you can see there's very little lag in terms of performance uh, being a cloud system uh, it's an amazing amazing work uh, what I say we have done over here all right let's create a class ZCL underscore unable trainings underscore maybe sales order and say class to create records in sales order table and I'm gonna say next and of course lock it in the same transport as you would like to logically group everything together and wow so what I would do is I would like to probably go in the typical C like programming model so you remember whenever you start learning force programming language probably the C language you start with void main function right or maybe if you start with Java then you start with uh, you know string void function so that's exactly what we do in any programming language a void main function which the moment program is executed your driver program executes that void main similarly I would like to create um, an executable class here which when executed it triggers a void main function kind of stuff so for that SAP gives me an object oriented ADD interface so let me add that interface in the public section so I'm just going to choose interfaces and we'll add IEF object oriented ADT class run interface that's available and as you all know that with the moment you add an interface systems gives me that the corresponding method for this interface implementation is missing which is fine just can also use right click and a quick um, a quick fix feature so just click here and say add an implementation double click and this then automatically creates the code in my implementation so now what I'm going to do is I want to insert three records as part of the table which we created just now so let's go back and use the table name and let's come back here and now we just define quickly an internal table so data I tab type table of this a basic core about programming as you all aware of those who come from our background in step number one we do a data declaration that's our step number one and now as part of my step number two I will be just creating a field which is going to get me the current timestamp so let's do that so I'll say get timestamp field and I will use inline data declaration to get the timestamp just let's say created on 
Uh, let's just read the current timestamp. And then in step number three, we will just fill in our internal table with some records. So I will just go ahead and say IDAP is equals to and another in, um, new above syntax which we will use is the, the, the value expression in above and now I would say please insert um, three records as part of this um, this internal table so you got to guess three parentheses inside and now let's pass in your values one by one for each parenthesis so this is going to be my data set for those three records which I would like to insert as part of my table and let's do that so I'm just going to come here and say sales order ID and since it's a 32 character ID random ID I can generate that with an above class above uh, UUID service class it's an inbuilt class in above I'm sure you must be aware of it those who work day and night with an above system so let's use that and this is something which is going to generate now a 32 character random ID that's our primary key so we're generating some random number and then we come here and do control space you can see now the list of fields as a code completion helps me a lot and I can just use customer name and I will say Anubo and then I can say next field I want to insert as my uh, gross amount for the sales order as I say 5000 and then currency code so filling the internal table as of now yeah and say created by I can pass a U name and then create it on and I can just pass here this timestamp awesome that's your record number one similarly let's create uh, two more records just paste this code here I'm not a really big fan of copy paste of code but just since you understand the meaning of this this line of code then makes sense for me to speed up my demo of course I uh, I'm not really a really big fan of doing copy paste of code in any of my training we would typically learn everything by writing every single line of code which helps you a lot to learn concepts line by line of course let's change some data over here I would say Jack and my favorite spider-man so let's put here um, 8500 I'll say euros and this one goes as 7960 US dollars yeah so three records in the internal table have come of course internal table doesn't make sense you got to go now and insert these records in your database table pretty easy so what I would do is I would just say go ahead please insert so every time you run this is gonna create three records of course the data is gonna be same but the keys are going to be different because we are using the UUID generation for random keys so this from table and I will say my internal table with the escaping of host variables it's a new above syntax completely and that's all so now we are injecting records to the actual database table from internal table those who are new to the above programming you all understand that internal table is something which is a temporary store for your program it's a program variable but this variable is not a simple scalar variable rather it's a collection of values which it can contain in form of rows and columns all right now we can just cross check quickly how many records do I have as part of my table so let's do a select count star um, into a variable and just use LV count from my database table sales order awesome and let's quickly um, okay it's giving me an error into a pending class must be at the end of okay no problem we'll do that just put in over here looks fine but this is how the ADT helps you actually to get rid of all the design time errors 
So in SAP GUI, typically what when we do is when you execute a program and try to activate a program, at that point of time you get the error. But here, the ADD is such a powerful tool which allows you to get those errors at design time while you're writing the code. So now this step is just counting the number of records in our table and just going to write these using the out parameter and I say write this on the screen. So I say records in our table are just do a chaining rather than using this guy probably use the string operator string chaining that's again another functionality as part of NetView 7.4 we have it and just inject our and we count over there that's gonna it, it is gonna write that okay there's some problem unmark symbol okay I'm so sorry <laughs> these days are doing a lot of JavaScript so semicolon is coming all right so now string literal unmark symbol okay and some problem It's not allowing me to use that we just have to use single quote and just concatenate that let's see if this is what is allowed I save this yes superb and we've got this print on console that's what it does so the moment you execute this class what will happen is system is going to insert three records as part of our table it's going to count the total records and going to print that on the ui in your console let's activate our class for the first time um, and i'll just quickly show you once again our table state i go back to table execute and see still it doesn't have any records super no problem i'm going to go back and our chart i will just execute our class for the first time this class is part of above on cloud and now i'm just going to uh, say f9 and voila you can see at the bottom records in our table are three and let me do f9 one more time voila you see there are six records now and i will do three more times probably and then we get about 18 records in the table let's go back and cross check i'm going to come here and uh, just re-execute um, the table or just refresh over here click on refresh button and there you go you can see those records are getting created as part of random sales order ids in your in your database table awesome so congratulations uh, your first database table in about on cloud uh, in the cloud system and also your first class which creates random records as part of your table so that's it for the demo don't forget to subscribe on this training on about on cloud with details we will learn a lot of amazing concepts of restful about programming model including cds views amdps adbcs we will build end-to-end -end transactional fury applications with sap managed scenario and we will also build an end-to-end -end extension scenario with SAP S4 HANA on-premise utilizing SAP S4 HANA APIs, whitelisted APIs as part of API Hub to create our extension scenario, keeping our core always stable. With that, Anubhav signing out. Thank you so much for attending this session. Catch you up in the classes. Goodbye.